Okay, so we're going to be looking at converting temperatures. Wait, hold on. Okay, so in this formula, what does C represent? Celsius. Degrees Celsius, good. What does, I already did. What does F represent in this formula? What would you replace F with? Degrees Fahrenheit. So this formula allows us to find what is degrees Celsius, right? Which means we have to be given F. Send it. Okay, he's told that he knows that it's minus 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit outside, and he needs to know what is that in degrees Celsius. So we need to figure out what is degrees Celsius equal to. So we're just going to plug in our value into the formula. So C equals 5 divided by 9 bracket F. What's that? What do I replace F with? Negative 5.5 minus 32, okay? Negative 20 point, we'll round off to eight, approximately equal to, so degrees Celsius is negative 20.8 degrees. So if you see the temperature as negative 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit, you know that's negative 20 Point eight degrees Celsius. Does that make sense to you now? Do you, do you have an idea of what that temperature might look like or feel like? So in this next example, look where the negative sign is for negative 4 over 5. What does that mean? It means that this fraction is a negative number, right? Can I rewrite that as negative 4 over positive 5 or 4 over negative 5. Does that represent the same thing? Okay, so let's just rewrite it. I'll put um, 4 over negative 5 plus 2 over negative 3. Okay, we can either have the denominators as negatives or how would I rewrite this to make the numerators negatives? Negative 4 over positive 5 plus what? Negative 2 over positive 3. Okay, so let's, let's work with this one here, the second example. What do you have to do when you're adding fractions? Find a common denominator. Anyone know what the common denominator is for this example? Good, so we need to multiply this by 3, multiply the numerator by 3, and multiply this by 5. Okay, so we have Make sure you watch your sign. You have negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 over 15 plus negative 2 times 5 would be negative 10 over 15. Okay, so we want to make sure that our numerator indicates the sign of the fraction because I'm not adding the denominators together. How, what do you do when you're adding fractions? We're adding the numerator, so I'm actually adding negative 12 plus negative 10, and my result will be, what happens to the denominator? Does it change? Over 15. What's negative 12 plus negative 10? Negative 22 over 15. Excellent. Is that lowest terms? No. How do you turn a, an improper fraction? I want to know what this is as a mixed number. We know, we remember that it indicated a negative, so it's negative, because this fraction's negative, 1 and 7 over 15 in lowest terms. And that's the answer. Okay, in this example, we're looking at calculating negative 2 and a half x. So what operation is that? Negative 2 and a half x, what operation is that? Multiply. So negative 2 and a half times something, which is given here, divided by something, which is also given. What do we, what do, we do with that given information? Plug it in, good. So negative two and a half. I know x is five and one third, so I'm going to insert that where x is, and I know that it's multiplication divided by, what's y? negative 1 and 7 ninths. So now we have 
we have to use order of operations to evaluate this expression that involves the rational numbers. Bed mass, what's the first thing we need to do here? Good, we need to multiply, but what do you notice about your fractions? What kind of fractions are these? What should you do with them? Turn them into improper fractions, good. Negative two times two. So I'll show you. We know that this negative sign tells us that the number is negative. Well, we're just gonna convert this part into an improper fraction. What's two times two? Four. Plus one. So the result is five over two as an improper fraction, but I have to include this negative. It's a negative number. Negative five divided by two. What's negative five divided by two? Negative 2.5. Look at the original fraction. Negative two and a half is equivalent to negative 2.5, which is equivalent to negative five over two, right? Okay, so we're multiplying negative five over two times, how do I turn five and one third into an improper fraction? Five times three plus one. Good, so we have 16 over three divided by, same thing. We know the answer will be a negative result. So we'll indicate that this is a negative number, but let's turn this part into an improper fraction. Nine times one plus seven, good. So it's negative 16 over nine. This negative tells me that the number, the value is negative. Okay, so now we need to follow bed mass, order of operations, and we know that we need to multiply these two fractions. Okay, because we, we solve division and multiplication in the order it appears. Multiplication appears first. Negative 5 times positive 16. Negative 80. 2 times 3. Good. Divided by negative 16 over nine. What do you do when you're dividing fractions? Multiply by the reciprocal. I'm gonna write this on the next page. Okay, so we need to multiply by the reciprocal. So I'm gonna rewrite negative 80 over six and I need to multiply by what? Nine over negative 16. Does it matter if I write, if I put the negative here? Does that change the fraction? Is negative nine over 16 the same as 9 over negative 16? Do these represent the exact same thing? Yeah, because I only have one negative sign. Negative and a positive is a negative. Positive and a negative is a negative. This still shows me that my fraction is negative. So I'm just going to line up the negative signs. Okay, so again, now we're multiplying fractions. Negative times a negative. Good. 80 times 9. Good. Six times 16. 96. And let's write this in lowest terms. I'll give you a minute. Good. Seven and a half in lowest terms. Made with DoodleCast Pro.